Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumption of independent errors using SPSS. When using SPSS to compute regression statistics, such as a simple linear regression or a multiple linear regression, one of the assumptions is that the residuals are independent of one another, which is also known as the assumption of independent errors. So taking a look at these fictitious data having the data view, I have five predictors here, depression, anxiety, substance use, panic, and hopelessness. So five measurements, each one measuring the corresponding construct, and then one dependent variable, which would be functioning, which we'll assume is a measurement of overall functioning. So we want to see, in this case, with a multiple linear regression, how these variables contribute to changes in this dependent variable. So to test for the assumption of independent errors, I'm going to go to Analyze, Regression, and Linear. And this is what the linear regression dialog looks like by default. I'm going to move all the predictor variables, all the independent variables, over to the list box labeled independent, and then functioning over to the dependent list box. And then under plots, I'm going to plot the standardized residuals against the standardized predicted values. So it would be ZRESID into the Y list box, and ZPRED into the X list box. So standardized residuals on the Y axis, standardized predicted values on the X axis. Now the resulting plot will help us test the assumptions for this multiple linear regression, such as linearity and the assumption of independent errors. But it's not the only test we see available for testing the assumption of independent errors. So I click continue here, and then go to statistics. And because I'm not interested really in the output of the regression, I'm gonna uncheck estimates and model fit. But down here under residuals, you see there's a statistic Durbin-Watson. I'm gonna check that off and click continue. Now the Durbin-Watson statistic is specifically designed to test that residuals are not correlated serially from one observation to the next. So it's dependent on the observations being in some sort of natural order, for example, time, like if you were tracking one month to the next. And it really does not work well outside of that context, and I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to click OK now and run the regression analysis. Of course, I'm only interested in a few things here. You can see that the Durbin-Watson comes up here. But I'm going to move down to the scatter plot first. And you can see the, we have the standardized predicted value here on the x-axis and the residual, standardized residual, on the y-axis. And what you're looking for here ideally would be more or less uh, the these points representing a rectangle and all the points being uh, between 3 and negative 3 on the standardized residual and negative 3 and 3 on the predicted value here on the x-axis. And you can see that more or less uh, that seems to be the case in terms of them falling within the uh, negative 3 to 3 range. Uh, but I don't know if this is exactly rectangular. So uh, these results here from this particular scatter plot, of course, interpreting uh, these scatter plots is always somewhat subjective, uh, but there might be some problems here uh, based on the way these are kind of concentrated uh, in the center, and you really don't have a rectangular pattern exactly here. But if we take a look at the uh, Durbin-Watson, we can see that we have a statistic value here of 1.9. Now, SPSS doesn't provide a probability associated with a Durbin-Watson statistic value. You have to find that using a critical values table. 
the Durbin-Watson runs from 0 all the way to 4, with 2 indicating that the residuals are uncorrelated, which is what we would want. As the Durbin-Watson moves from 2 in the direction of 4, that indicates a increasingly stronger negative correlation, and as it moves from 2 to 0, that indicates an increasingly stronger positive correlation. So really what you want is a Durbin-Watson value around 2. And of course in this case at 1.9, we could safely say it's close enough to 2 to assume that there is no worrisome level of correlation between the residuals. And even though there are no general rules in terms of what's acceptable or not outside the critical values, generally between 1.5 and 2.5 would probably be safe in most instances, although not in all instances. But here's the problem with this. Remember the Durbin-Watson is to be interpreted in the context of observations that have some sort of natural order, like time series studies. So even though we have a value here that's acceptable, when we look down here at the scatter plot, it's a little more suggestive that something may be wrong. Again, this is not necessarily a bad scatter plot, but it's certainly a little bit more of a cause for concern than a Durbin-Watson value that is right near 2. You know, 1.9 is right near 2, suggesting there's really no problem at all. So let's say I go back to the data set. Remember this value here, 1.904. I go back to the data set, and I just change the order that the records present, in the order in which they're displayed, right? So here, um, case 1011, of course, comes after 101. Zero. So if I were to just move this one case up, now it's just out of order. You have 1009, then 1011, then 1010. I'll run the exact same analysis. I'm making no changes here. And we can see the value of the Durbin Watson statistic change to 1.920. And of course, if we go to the a scatter plot, there is no change here. This is the same scatter plot. And this is because the urban Watson is dependent on the order in which the cases are listed. So if I went in again and just picked another data point like 1026 and I moved it up a few spots, ran the same analysis. Again, making no changes to this dialog. Durbin Watson statistic changes. Again, same scatter plot. So, as you can see, the Durbin Watson is really only useful to function in testing if residuals are correlated serially from one observation to the next when you have a natural order like a time series order which is why in this case, like a multiple linear regression, I would just plot the standardized residuals against the standardized predicted values and interpret this as I test the assumption of independent errors. With different data and a different research question, of course the Durbin-Watson may be appropriate. For example, if you had a time series data and you felt that serial autocorrelation was a problem. But for this data set and the research question that we're asking of these data, plotting the standardized residuals against the standardized predicted values works well to test the assumption of independent errors. I hope you found this video on testing the assumption of independent errors using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.